Thief of Sanity, those are the main creatures, but he is going bigger. He's got nine Planeswalkers in his main deck this weekend with Teferi, Hero of Dominaria, Teferi, Time Raveler, Liliana, Dreadhorde General, and Soren, Vengeful Bloodborne in various numbers. And as we saw when we watched Brian earlier yesterday, those Dovins Veto in the main deck. They're nice. They were good. They were good. I'm a big fan of Negate, and the Can't Be Countered came up a, a surprising amount in the matches that we watched yesterday. Guy Eternal Kefnet will go into the graveyard. Austin Collins will draw a card. Did he find land number three? And more importantly, blue source number two for Narset. It's a field of ruin. Well, it is land three, and it is maybe delayed blue source number two. It's not a bad draw. I mean, you would, you would ideally like an island there, but um, the field of ruin is disruptive for BBD, and... Uh, we'll fix Collins' mana a little bit. We will head back over to BBD now. <laughs> Former world champion and coming off a mythic championship top eight with humans is Brian. Had a fun conversation with him. Uh, yesterday, where, you know, that wasn't the deck I think he expected to have his first Mythic Championship top eight with. Sure. 37 creatures, <laughs> but, you know, whatever works, right? He'll play a Hollow Fountain untapped and pass the turn back. He's been a mid-range player, a control player, sometimes even a combo player. Not really known for playing a ton of aggressive decks, but, again, whatever gets it done. As here is Field of Ruin being activated on Brian's Watery Grave. So both players are going to search up basics. Punching up the deck list, I will also say it might be time for some more Field of Ruins in Standard. Yeah. Because I am punching up a bunch of deck lists that have no basics. They are a little light. Yeah, there yeah. Are, are one basic. Yep. Brian's Esper Midrange deck has an island and a swamp, and I saw a lot of Esper Midrange decks with one basic, right. like you mentioned. Skimping a little. I, I punched up a Jeskai Control deck this morning with zero. Would just be... Would just be wasteland against them. Yep. Better than, be wasteland. Better than wasteland. Yeah, you, right? you, you get a land. Keep your vantage. Yeah. Just a free stowed raid. Let's go back over to Collins now. Getting that blue source there for the Narset in hand. He's playing four copies of Narset. Parter avails in his main deck here this weekend. Felt that one was pretty powerful. It's looked pretty good thus far. Austin may be trying to resolve one now, and he will play Narset. Looks like Dovin's Veto is going to take care of that. Collins did draw a land in the swamp, so he plays another land and passes the turn back over to Brian. He's working himself out of these mana issues that he did have. And there's no real way for Collins to play around the Dovin's Veto for the whole game. You know, he's got just a bunch of expensive spells, so he's got to just power his way through it. Doesn't look good, but he doesn't really have an alternative line. Yep. Brian weighing his options once again. Looks like Drowned Catacomb is going to be the land. Catacomb. Catacomb. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> A naked hostage taker will just, be the play. Just so sweet. <laughs> well, it might be better than doing nothing. Brian's got three main deck copies of Hostage Taker. Not ideal in this matchup. That's somewhat Planeswalker centric, I would say. Collins is a very serious athlete at the table, but it looked like he was trying to suppress laughter. Yeah. <laughs> There's an auger of bulls. But absolutely busted. Take a look at the top couple of cards. Put them on the bottom. All three on the bottom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Austin consulting his hand while looking at the scry. When Augur Bolas enters the battlefield, be reminded of three non-spell cards that are in your deck, then put them on the bottom. Mm, yes. <laughs> Ideally three lands. <laughs> Perhaps two lands and a Planeswalker. The young man from Kansas City thinking a lot on this decision. And he'll go with Cast Down. Those other cards will go to the bottom of the deck. Don't know if he found land number five or not. He did not. And he'll pass the turn back over to BBD. Brian will draw. 
So we work ourselves into the mid game here in round 10, our first of the day. I had this epiphany the other day. I realized that the original Ravnica block was so long ago that I have become nostalgic for the old Ravnica Dual Land artwork. Hall of Fountain in particular. The original Hall of Fountain, I think, is one of my favorite. Probably makes my top 25 pieces of art. Yeah? Yeah, love okay. it. Love that art. Let's do a little compare and contrast. Well, the more recent Hall of Fountains have a very sort of angular feel to them. Whereas the Hall of, the original Hall of Fountain to me feels like something you would see in a city square, which is a lot of what kind of like the Ravnica feel is going for. This will be Teferi. And in response, Collins will cast the cast down on the hostage taker. Teferi Time Raveler appears to be a very popular card here this weekend. The players that I talked to, and here's Thought Eraser on the draw step because of Teferi's plus one have really felt that this is one of the best cards in the set. And as we take a look at that new Planeswalker, we'll go over that in just a moment, but Austin Collins' hand does have Tyrant Scorn, Cry of the Carnarium, another copy of Narset, and the Liliana that Brian saw earlier. So he'll take a card and surveil here in a moment, but the reason Brian can do this is because of the plus one, which says until your next turn, you may cast sorcery spells as though they had flash. So Thought Eraser is being cast as though it had flashed to take a card from Austin Collins in his draw step. And then, of course, as the return up to one target artifact, creature, or enchantment to its owner's hand, draw a card. I know Shaheen Sarani has felt very strongly about this Teferi, but other players like Edgar uh, Mayesh and, and Matthew Dilks also thinking that Teferi is one of the best cards in the set. Well, I think a three-mana Planeswalker that has enter the battlefield, draw, the, draw a card as an option, it's really hard for that card to miss. Whether it's uh, a staple or if it's, you know, uh, one of the five best cards or uh, something lower than that, you know, uh, that's going to be, you'll, you'll see where that lands. But there's, I think there's no way it misses. Yeah. It's, there's no way. Tyrant Scorn was used there for Austin to bounce his own Augur of Bolas. And then and got reminded it. of three cards that are non-spell cards that are in his deck and put them on the bottom. Straight to the bottom. <laughs> Heading back Brian's way now. Though, you know, Collins' deck does not play that many spells for an Augur Bolas deck. Mm -hmm. He's at 23. That strikes me as low. So, you know, that's, um, you know, in the ballpark of 40% of his deck. And look at three with a, you know, three shots at a 40%er, you do miss a lot. It's not, that's not that weird. Uh, enter the God Eternals at instant speed. Super cool. Bow, 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 bow. <laughs> <laughs> so that's dead. Going to do some milling. Going to do some gaining of life. Make a 4-4. Four, four. Teferi looking pretty good here. Get our white die out there for plus one, plus one counters. Because there's Tyrant Scorn. It'll bounce that. And we'll head back over to Brian now. Brian, no cards in hand. He's got that Teferi going. Well, it looks like he drew a good card. Might be another Teferi. The five mana variety. Yeah, good top deck there for BBD. He'll plus. He'll be untapping some lands in a moment. He's, of course, got to use his other Teferi. So it's Teferi control here early this morning. And he'll actually use the minus. Play Glacial Fortress, untap a couple lands, pass the turn back. Austin with an island right off the top of the deck onto the battlefield. We head back over to BBD with his two Teferis. Plus the Hero of Dominaria, draw a card. Plus the Time Raveler can play his Sorceries at instant speed. There is the Fasanity. Untap a couple of lands. Pass the turn back over to Collins, who now has to contend with a Thief. He'll start with an Opt. The top card will become the bottom card, so a mystery card coming here for Collins. And now we'll play Cry the Carnarium. That'll take care of the Thief of Sanity. That's something that Brian knew he had from an earlier Thought Eraser. And now 
out to Fairy. Time Raver will plus. Brian will play another Thief of Sanity. He's already drawn his cards, of course, with the Teferi Hero of Dominaria. And now going to put Collins to the test once again. You see Brian's got this Mega Mana advantage. Not really the kind of matchup or deck to take advantage of it like you'd see in a traditional control mirror, but it doesn't hurt. No, and, you know, it, it doesn't, especially when you're drawing three cards a turn. It's yeah. have a lot of mana. <laughs> Here's Narset. And that will resolve, so it'll be a minus here on Narset. Take a look at the top four cards. It's search for his Kanta on a Planeswalker, more or less. Not a creature, non-land is what you get to take, so. Enter the God Eternals will go to the grip. Swamp and then Liliana in hand. So that's what Austin Collins is working with as we head back over to Brian. BBD is going to take some time to analyze this battlefield. Looks like he's going to minus Teferi to take care of Narset. So tuck that away. Here comes Thief of Sanity. This is kind of cute because it actually takes care of the Narset now for good. Because well, Thief of Sanity takes a look at the top couple of cards. Well, uh, I mean, it, BBD can actually just play it, right? Yeah, which is what he's going to do. <laughs> It's even, it's even better than that. Yeah. Now he has an Narset on his side of things. The Parter of Veils is now BBD's, thanks to Thief of Sanity. And Brian will take a look at the top couple of cards. Pretty filthy play there. And now he's got a Liliana. So now it's a Planeswalker party. Super friends indeed here for BBD. And Collins just out here playing it out. <laughs> yeah. That is true. I'm not sure how much longer Austin wants to try to work himself through this because Liliana is going to enter the fray. I imagine a zombie's on the way. But, yeah, this isn't getting any easier. Brian just got to make sure he uses all of his planeswalkers now. Austin will draw. Enter the God Eternals is going to be played. That's going to take care of Thief of Sanity. And so that will resolve. Four cards will be milled. And perhaps Austin's just trying to get a little bit of info on his yep. way out the door here by asking to see the graveyard. Smart thing to do from the youngster because uh, it's going to take uh, a lot to win the game. Does he have a copy of the Elder spell? No. Okay. And Austin will concede. So... Brian Bob is going to win game number one here against Austin Collins. Esper midrange up a game over Demir midrange. As Austin had some land troubles and just didn't have a great hand that particular game. But Brian played his card excellently, as he oftentimes does. And we'll see what happens in our sideboard games. Let's start with those sideboards. And we will start with Austin Collins, who's got four copies of Dreadhorde Invasion. Three, Finale of Eternity. Two on Mortigo, two Negate, two Duress, and two Disdainful Stroke. The good news for Austin is that his deck gets a lot better after sideboard. Yeah, I mean, I'm, in, I'm into Disdainful Stroke, Duress, Negate, and the four copies of Dreadhorde Invasion. So a lot to bring in. And he can, you know, I, you don't want to totally bail on your removal because you saw Thief of Sanity, but um, you, you can certainly have less. Uh, and in exchange, you get ways to interact with Planeswalkers, which, uh, as we saw in game number one, uh, they, they buried Collins. For Brian, two Basilica Bell Haunt. Two Davriel Rogue Shadow Mage, two Deputy Attention, two Dovin's Veto, two Duress, two Moment of Craving, two Time Wipe, and an Unmoored Ego. So a pretty diversified sideboard for our Esper mid range. I think you'll see the Duresses, the Dovin's Vetoes, and the Davriels come in here. Fair enough. I think pretty straightforward options. Again, Brian also has the ability to get away from some removal. I think this is the kind of matchup where Enter the God Eternals isn't good for either player. Uh, I mean, if I was in Collins' spot, I definitely don't want the full four. I might like cut them all together. If he left in one or two, I think that's justifiable. Um, BBD, uh, I, would, I would guess, is going to cut them all together. And Brian can also cut those hostage takers, too. Yeah. Which I don't think are particularly good. you got to be mindful, though. You know, it's very common in these spots for, for control players with very few creatures in game one to have stuff on the sideboard. So I don't know if you want to go all the way down to zero, but uh, certainly you can confidently shave some of it. Well, those are your options there for both players, and they will sideboard, shuffle up, and get ready for game number two as we kick off round number 10 here in Richmond, Virginia. We do want to talk about the StarCityGames.com weekly sale, where it does change every single Monday. We've got hundreds of singles on sale through Monday, including History of Benalia, 
a beautiful planes from un not hinged uh, stable unstable got there mm -hmm. lightning greaves and a chromas memorial go to starcitygames.com slash sale for more information and make sure you just bookmark that because we change it every single Monday with new sales all the time we prepare to get our eyes on BBD versus Austin Collins a little bit more here We'll have a time-shifted match for you. Nick Miller's working on a pretty healthy metagame breakdown because we've got over 100 players in day number two of competition here in Richmond. As Patrick has alluded to, we've typed up all of our deck lists here, so those will go live after round number 15. We make our cut to the top eight. For all of you that are looking for the information for War of the Spark Standard, as far as what I typed up, pretty diversified. I saw a lot of mono red, okay. and I, I definitely saw a lot more adaptation of pre-existing deck versus... Entirely new deck, but there were some entirely new ones as well. Niv Mizzid Highlander. One of, one, of, one of many. Feather, plus uh, spells that interact well with Feather. Mm -hmm. And others. I think that Feather thing is... Uh, I'm interested to see what's going on there. I am. I think the deck's good. Uh, I, I don't know about good, necessarily, but... It was sure doing a bunch of impressive stuff when it had Feather in play. That's true. I, mean, I hope it's not too reliant on Feather, I guess is what I'll say. Right, you need sort of a... The problem is that Feather sort of presupposes you have to have a lot of spells that play well with it. And then how many creatures can you really put in your deck? And then do you have these draws where it's a bunch of spells and one thing, and if the one thing dies, then you have a bunch of cards that don't work. Yeah. You know. That's my concern, but we will have to see over time as that deck continues to develop itself. And, you know, what's the mid-range deck of choice? Before it was Saltai mid-range with Wild Growth Walker and, and Branch Walker and Jade Light Ranger, but this weekend I've seen way more Esper mid-range. I think the, the Plains Walkers are a big shift there. Uh, I, I think that Esper, uh, Blue White, got the better of it in terms of the Plains Walkers in the set compared to, you know, the Saltai color pairings. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's going to direct people more and more to playing with uh, Esper or Blue White rather than Sultai or Simic or whatever. The one card that just I haven't really seen cast that much this weekend that when we were in Indianapolis in January that really debuted and took over was Hydroid Crisis. We just haven't really seen any. I, I, it's hard for me to believe that card isn't still quite good. Well, uh, there's a... Uh there's not a shortage. You, you know, remember when Karn got uh, previewed? Mm hmm Sign of Versa, and, mm -hmm. and I'm like, this is busted. Uh, it's not that Karn's bad. It's that they print a lot of ways for you to draw a lot of cards with if you're willing to spend some mana. And how much better is Hydroid Crisis than any Planeswalker you could play? Not, it's not exactly the same thing, and there's certainly times where Hydra Crisis is better than a Planeswalker, but if you're willing to spend five or six mana on a card and you're interested in drawing cards, it's not like Hydra Crisis exists on its own plane. There is There are like 25 powerful cards you can choose from. That's a very good point. And it's just, so it's just one of many. Same with Car and Sion of Urza. They, it's not hard to find, uh, you know, how are you supposed to play Karn when they let you play with Experimental Frenzy? Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or other four mana planeswalkers. So it's not an indictment on Karn or Hydra or Krasis. They're very powerful cards. There's just a lot of competition for a finite number of slots. They all do similar things. I haven't seen much Karn recently at all. Right. It's like a cyborg card. And like, you know, Mono Red could cyborg card. And we see some Karns in some people's cyborgs. But is Karn better than the new Chandra for a Mono Red deck? Maybe yes, maybe, maybe no. Yeah, yeah right. It's yeah. Not, so it's not, again, it's not an issue with Karn being weak. It's an issue with there's just so many Karns to choose from that it's so unlikely that any specific Karn is going to be the Karn you play with. Opening hands here, folks. we got Thief of Sanity on Brian's side at the very least. Austin Collins with those NAR sets that have been popular for him and also has a copy of Dreadhorde Invasion on the play. So huh, for you old school players out there, which that's painful for me to, painful for me to say, who have seen turn two bitter blossom be game over a lot of the time? I'm curious if that's the case with Red Horde Invasion. I think we might have the opportunity to try to find out. Though Brian does have a copy of Mortify in hand now. Brian's going to play a Watery Grave on tap and a Duress. Well, maybe never we won't find, mind. Maybe we won't find out at all. Way to set it up, only to 
disappoint. Yeah. <laughs> Dreadhorde Invasion is the new enchantment from War of the Spark. Very Bitter Blossom-esque. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may lose... Excuse me, you may. You lose one life. There is no may here. And a mass one. You put a plus one, plus one counter on an army you control. If you don't control one, you create a zero, zero black a zombie army creature token first. And when a zombie token you control with power six or greater attacks, it gains life leak until end of turn. So Narset's going to bite the dust again. This is notable because if you're Austin, you have to realize that Brian has an answer to this card. You're still going to play it. Yep. I mean, Mortify is the most obvious. Brian will play a Hollow Fountain tapped. And Austin will create a zombie army. And it'll have a counter on it. So we're going to head back over to Austin now as he falls down to 19. Field of Ruin. Pass the turn back. Looks like it's going to be in the draw step that Austin's going to fire off the field of ruin and take care of the hollowed phone. So this is interesting. BBD's deck does not contain a plains. Is that correct? He has an island and a swamp. Let me confirm. I close the deck list. Let me reopen it. Great. Yeah, I know. <laughs> because if he doesn't play with a plains, this might be a really heads-up play here from Collins trying to cut BBD off of the mortify he was signaling by not taking the Dreadhorde evasion off of that initial discard spell. So I would agree if, if Collins did this when BBD was tapped out, but he's doing it on his upkeep? No, I think he's draw-stepping. Well, either way, right, Brian can just go float to white. Not into his main phase where he needs land number three. Well, so, he's got, so he has two lands. He has two lands. He floats a white. He gets his land from... Oh, yeah, yeah, no, um, you're right. Yeah, yeah, he does. Yeah, right. Yeah, so if Austin yeah. wants to do that, he has to do it when Brian's Hollow Fountain is actually tapped. Now, Brian has more white mana, so everything appears to be fine. He's actually just going to play Defa Sandy, so he must not care about this Dreadhorde Butcher, or excuse me, this Dreadhorde Invasion at all. Well, it's the difference between having Collins having a 1 1 or having a 2 2, and that just might not be a big enough of a difference for uh, BBD to want to wanna take a turn off of casting Defa Sandy. Now, Brian's basics, again, are an island and a swamp, so there is no planes yeah. here. Here comes the Knucklehead. It's a 2 2 that's coming across. And Brian's Thief of Sanity is still alive, and it is attacking, and it is connecting, which is bad news for Austin Collins. So those are the three cards that Brian's going to look at. And now there's the Mortify to take care of the Dreadhorde invasion. So it is clear that Brian was not too scared of that card and saying, more or less, I can beat a 2 2 and Thief of Sanity is more important. Right. Yeah, if you, if you get Thief of Sanity online, then it, that's so much higher upside than whether or not Collins is a 1 1 versus a 2 2. It doesn't really matter that much. Thought Eraser is going to take Soren because that's the only option in Brian's hand. Brian's hand is full of lands, and then he's got a mystery card that he's taken from Austin. Dreadhorde, Dreadhorde invasion will be surveilled away. And Austin may be deciding what land he wants to play. He'll go with the Swamp and attack for two. Thief of Sanity is such a brutal squeeze in these kind of matchups because, you know, all, all your good sideboard cards are anti-spell, and you want to cut a lot of your creature removal uh, because it's it's bad, and you're playing against discard spells, so it's really bad if dead cards are getting stranded in your hand. And then this th just this happens sometimes. It's hard to manage all the different angles of attack here that, that BBD has. Let's try to get a little look what Brian's taken here. It looks like he's going to take Augur of Bolas, I believe. And he will. So Vraska's Contempt in a land went into Austin's graveyard. <laughs> Is reminded of three cards he has. Yes, of course. <laughs> it's, it's funny, people think we're joking, but we've watched Augur of Bolas in its last time format. Put him right to the bottom, folks. It's a little camera shy. Collins is going to try to resolve a Liliana. However, Austin, you gave him that negate. 
Stop hitting yourself. Yes. You gave him that negate. FIFA Sanity is a ridiculous magic card. Uh, I don't know. Not against the decks I play. <laughs> sure. That's, that's I have true. not had that's this, true. this, is, this that's experience. True. I get humiliated in a bunch of different ways. And this doesn't happen to me. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> You're happy with it. Yeah, like yeah. Sanity. It's like, okay, well, <laughs> that is dead, and yeah. I'll untap. <laughs> <laughs> Nara said among the options now for Brian. Yeah, that's a good point. This, this does not happen to you right. ever. Yeah. Brian has taken a Narset. The other, but you know, the, the other thing happens to me where, you know, Augur Bolas reveals Vraska's Contempt. And I'm like, I'm not playing this one out. I concede. <laughs> I concede. <laughs> no. I, can't, I can't even beat the 1-3. It, the, the, it comes with a removal spell. It's just rubbing it in. Dovin's Veto, the selection there off a of Narset, with the an appropriate mana to cast it. And Brian will play a Glacial Fortress. And he'll pass the turn back with access to the new counter spell. And as Austin Collins will draw a card. This is a fodder racer to clear the path potentially for something. I think we're going to see that Dovin's Veto, yes. Collins will play a Drowned Catacomb and pass the turn back. Because 2-2 two -two can't even get through the Augur Bola. It's, it's just so, I mean, this is excruciating. <laughs> <laughs> In these mid-range mirrors, it looks like maybe FIFA Sanity may be king. It's like, drew your, you know, you drew your sideboard card. It was atrocious. Yeah, your, 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 your dreadboard? <laughs> it, it wasn't. <laughs> Brian elected to not kill it immediately. <laughs> didn't, so. kill, didn't even kill it. Yeah. Just <laughs> all you got to show for it is a, is a skate zombie being, yep. currently being held off by your own auger bullets. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's a tough. It's, it's a tough way to go about doing it early in the good morning. Good morning, yep. yeah. Good morning, rise and shine. <laughs> <laughs> Thought eraser, among others, going to go to the graveyard here. Brian does have a Lilian in hand. He's going to go to Hero of Precinct One now. Swamp. Thought eraser trigger. Disdainful stroke is gone. <laughs> Never. Just, BBDs cast nothing that's cost four or more. Yeah. <laughs> the whole game. It's just threes. Uh, this might be the clinic. <laughs> this, this is, might be the clinic. This is, this is great. Yeah, this might be the clinic. BBD is in his comfort zone right now. Brian will untap. He is in the driver's seat as he'll draw a card. Six mana? Looks like maybe Liliana. Yeah. Opt in response. Top card becomes the bottom. Top of deck. And uh, remember here that Collins has to be opting uh, on the opposing turn because of the Narset passive. Yep. Yep. Not, you know, not that it matters. Yes. <laughs> Brian Brundu is going to win this match here against Austin Collins. Two games to zero. Esper mid-range going to shellack Demir mid-range. And oddly, uh, I think that Demir mid-range, like we talked about yesterday, is probably quite good against the aggressive decks and mono red. But in these mid-rangey matchups, especially uh, I think this one, I think he's a lot worse. Well, it's it's you know there's a lot of cards in Collins's deck where they need to line up kind of in specific ways for them to be good, and BBD's deck is it, it, it's the mixture of planeswalkers plus counter spells plus thought erasers plus creatures. Of BBD has all these different dimensions, all these different angles of attack to go down, and there's so much pressure on Collins to line up the 25% of his deck that lines up the right way against the 25% of BBD's deck that he happens to be playing with. Yep. And that can be different game to game or over the course of several turns. And you can see it, it, BBD was always just doing good stuff, tapping out all the time. And Collins was really struggling to get his cards to just line up appropriately. Yeah, they didn't line up at all in either one of those games. And that's why Brian Brown doing is now 
Nine and one here while Austin Collins is going to slide down to eight and two. It's a three minute break, folks, here from Richmond, and then we are going to watch our time shifted match. So we'll see you guys back here in just a bit. Hello everybody, welcome back. StarCityGames.com, Richmond Open Weekend, part of Season 1 of the 2019 SCG Tour. Cedric and Patrick here in the booth. Keep in mind, Brian G and Jerry T are headed in after this round to take you through rounds 11 and 12. But for now, we want to take you through our time-shifted match between Ross Merriam and Jonathan Hobbs.